Hi, thanks for joining us today for Home Builders one, or Home Buyers 101. Oh, I've already messed up. We just got started. Um, I'm Lisa Zimmerman. I'm the Chief Economic Inclusion Officer for West Central. And joining me today, Ryan Pinkston is a realtor with Keller Williams. And Michelle Smith is a credit building coordinator for West Central. And um, today we're just going to um, share some information about if you have ever thought about having your own home or you want to be a homeowner in the future, if you're tired of paying a landlord instead of paying yourself, and some things to think about um, before you would um, approach a, uh, uh, be able to make that happen. So I'm going to turn it over to Ryan and Michelle. Hi, Michelle. How are you? Thank you, Lisa. I'm great. How are you, Ryan? I'm good. Well, good. I got to say, I was super excited when you guys asked me to come and be a panelist and share some of my knowledge and thoughts about buying a home for the first time, because there's a lot of misconceptions in the market. Um, one of the big misconceptions is that one, you had to have perfect credit to buy a house. You, you don't. Um, you do need to have stable credit, but it doesn't have to be perfect. You can have some mistakes on there and still be able to buy a house. Um, but one of the first things that people need to do when they decide they want to buy a house is make sure that it's actually what they want to do. They need to make sure that they have stable employment. You know, that they've been at their job for about a year, preferably two, um, that they want to stay there for a couple of years because it, it's, it is a commitment. When you buy a house, you are committing that this is where I want to live for a little bit. But the good part about that is you're going to be paying a payment to somebody. It might as well be you. Because when you're renting, you're basically paying someone else's mortgage payment. Um, and make sure that your home life is stable as well. You're not planning on getting a divorce next month because that just makes it more difficult. But if you are single, you can buy a house. If you're married, if you're gay, if you're poor, you can buy a house. It's not, there's actually laws prohibiting any sort of discrimination and banks look at a big picture and they look at the numbers. That's what they care about. And um, the numbers aren't what you have in your head. There's so many programs available. Oh, my coworkers here. <laughs> hey, Carter boy. <laughs> Can you go get your iPad, please? No. no? Okay. okay. Can you be quiet then? Thank you. Um, <laughs> he's the reason why I chose real estate because I'm not locked to a desk every day from nine to five. So I can actually um, take care of him and enjoy being a dad while helping other people find homes. Hey, Carter, don't do that, honey. Thank you. Um, all right, so the first step when after you've established i'm good to buy a house i love my life i love my family i love my home life um you talk to a lender <laughs> everyone thinks oh i need to go on zillow no you can look at zillow and get an idea of what neighborhoods you like but the first step is talk to a mortgage lender um they're gonna let you know for one the cost of borrowing the money they're going to let you know what programs are available. There's a lot of programs for zero down. There's a lot of programs for 1% down, 3% down. It's, you, you don't always have to do the 20% down. That's actually not common anymore to put a full 20% down payment. Um, they're also, they'll set a budget for you, but you need to, Carter, please please let me do this. Thank you. Um, the bank will give you a bigger budget 
typically than what you're actually comfortable paying because their math is paper math. They're, they don't factor in a lot of extras. And so if you're making $3,000 a month and they approve you for $1,500 a month mortgage payment, that only leaves you $1,500 for everything else. And that's not going to work. You'll want you to set your budget closer to seven eight hundred, dollars which will still get you a hundred dollars to $125,000 house easily. Um, and every mortgage payment, will be helping you build equity in your home and it's yours. And mortgage brokers, you don't have to use just one. Um, personally for first time home buyers, I like Andrew at Gershman Mortgage. He really takes the time to explain your options, the real costs of borrowing the money. Uh, when you're borrowing the money, look at it more as you're buying because that's essentially what you're doing. You're buying the rights to use money to buy your house. And each bank is gonna have different requirements and different pricing and different, it's all a little bit different. So it's really important to choose someone that you're comfortable working with and someone that you trust. Um, let me pull up the different programs. All right, so there's the VA loan program. These are some of the programs for financing. Um, for VA, if you are eligible military veteran, it's a minimum 580 credit score. Sometimes it's less than that. Um, you can borrow up to $548,000. Um, it's pretty easy. With that aspect, though, the USDA one is going to be more for our area, the rural communities. Um, typically, they want us around a 600 credit score. They don't want a lot of late payments for the past 12 months, but it is zero down. Um, a lot of times you can get the closing costs either rolled into the loan or get it covered by the house you're buying. So you just you talk to your realtor about that and get it negotiated in. Um, you can get a, a loan on a manufactured home. So if you're looking at a house and it was a manufactured home and you love the land, you love it all, as long as it's got a stable foundation, you can get a mortgage on it. They do have a few extra qualifiers, but it's not bad. Um, I don't wanna get into a lot of details about the programs available because each person is so different the general idea is there are people that are willing to help you buy a house. And that's the most important key. A lot of people have been burned. I get it. I've been burned by a bank or four. But that's why you build the team that you can trust. Um, just have conversations with them. They will, um, you'll have to fill out a credit app and they'll let you know within a day or two of where you are, what programs you qualify for and how much you can spend. Um, or if there's things that need to be worked on, they'll tell you what to work on. If you have an old debt from three years ago, they may tell you, hey, you know, this, is this legitimate? Dispute it if not, or let's get this taken care of. They'll, they'll guide you on what ways to go. And that's also why Michelle's there. She'll help you figure out how to rebuild your credit, what programs to do. Um, but the credit side, it's pretty cut and dry. You know, you, you just talk to a mortgage lender. That's easy. Now the fun stuff. Okay, so after you get your pre-approval from a lender, you hire a realtor. And talk to a few. They were not all the same. <laughs> um, and, you know, they'll help you establish realistically what home you can buy. Um, and make sure that you like them and trust them because you'll spend a lot of time together. Um, don't worry about paying 
yes, you are technically hiring a realtor, but my commission, my income is from the seller side. So the house you're buying, they pay me for helping coordinate the entire transaction. So it's essentially, it's not free because legally I can't say it's free anymore, but it does not cost you out of pocket to hire a realtor on the buyer's side. So they can give you advice, they can help you, they can guide you. The point of a realtor is they are, they handle the icky stuff, the paperwork, um, the negotiating, they make sure that the house is going to be in your best long-term interest. Um, once you get your budget and you establish your wants, establish your needs, because we all want the four thousand dollar or four thousand square foot house on fifty acres with the pond. But in reality, um, not all of our budgets are going to qualify for that. So um, get an idea of, I need three bedrooms. I would like four, but I really need three. So that way, when you're looking for a house, there's no surprises or disappointments. Um, look at multiple homes. I, I can't stress this enough. Don't buy the first house you look at because there's that high, that... <gasps> oh, it's so beautiful. I can take care of this. I want this, but it may not be the right house. Look at two, at least three houses and that will give you a, a good baseline of what house you really want and need. And listen to your realtor. Hi. Okay. Can you say hi? Hi. This is my coworker, Carter. He's Wave. Hi, Carter. <laughs> Adorable. And he loves real estate. Do you love real estate? Yeah. You like looking at houses? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I my face. Okay. Can you go and check on Peppa Pig? Yeah. Okay, go check on Peppa Pig. Yeah, okay, you can watch while I talk, okay? But be quiet. Yeah. All right. Um, Today's market, it is crazy. People, COVID has affected so many people in so many different ways. And yeah. one of the ways it's affected our area, Carter, Carter, shh, is we are in a rural community. We're in a, an area that was perceived as COVID proof. And so we've got a, a huge influx of people from out of state moving here because it's a simpler in their minds, a simpler way to live. Um, that in turn has caused a housing shortage. So yes, be particular in what houses you want to buy, but also understand that when you find it, you can't wait two weeks like before. There's not gonna be a whole lot of room for negotiating anymore. Um, a lot of times people will show you a house that's 10, 20,000 over your max budget that you've set because before you can negotiate it down. It, it's, that's not really the case anymore. So you'll actually want to look at houses a little bit below your budget just to make sure that you can buy it. Um, get an inspection. Once you find the house you want and you put it under contract with your realtor, it's going to cost you a little bit of money, 200 to $500, depending on how big the house is, how old the house is, what systems need checked, but it's the best money you can spend. It basically ensures that the major components of your home are safe for the foreseeable future. Um, there's a lot of times people, they'd say, oh, I don't want to spend the $300 for an inspection. And then they move into the house and a week later, the appliances have died um the foundation cr was cracked and they didn't catch it or whatever um just make sure that you listen to the advice your agent gives you because they are on your side um and then make sure that you look at home warranties 
that can be rolled into your mortgage. It's just, and typically I don't push any sort of thing like that, but it's similar to when you go to the car dealership and you are offered an extra warranty. Typically I say no, but these are so affordable that it's worth it because it, you can get it for as little as a year. You can get it as long as the length of the mortgage just depends. Um, but if something goes wrong with your home, they come in and fix it. Um, ask your agent about those things because they'll be able to guide you. And we don't get paid a commission when we sell those things. Um, and unlike a car, your car typically comes with a warranty. The house doesn't. When you buy the house, it's done, it's yours. So it's worth looking, making sure that everything is in place for when you uh, move in. Um, closing times right now for a house are running 30 days at the very minimum up to 60 days. Sometimes it can be a little bit longer. Um, USDA is typically running 45 days. So when, once you put your house under contract, there'll be a whole slew of things that happen. Um, let's see. Oh, let's see. I just threw some things in the chat box that are some non-financial benefits and financial benefits for owning, owning a home. And actually Carter was what reminded me of this list I had seen because it talked about the positive impact on academic achievement um, with kids three to 12. Um, there's been a lot of studies that show owning your home um, produces smarter kids because you're in one location and um, kids feel safe. They know their they know their schoolmates, they know their teachers, they know their community. So just some extra stuff in there for you guys. That was a great point out. Yeah, um, I will say uh, we adopted my son. And one of the things that his birth mom asked was that we make sure that he feels safe. And one of the questions she asked was if we owned our own home or if we rented. And um, I asked, why did it matter? I mean, we've, we've owned our home. We've been lucky. We've owned our home for about 13 years now. But um, she said, I've never owned my own home. My mother was not able to buy a home and I want him to know where home is. And so that That's brought up those emotions. Yeah, right. Because there are so many other factors. Um, <laughs> one of my current clients, I asked her, I could share her story. Um, six years ago, she was an addict. She was homeless. She was bouncing from hotel to hotel when she had the money and six years ago she had her epiphany and she decided enough and she has been clean for six years now she called me yesterday she was so excited her credit score was over 700 um it's something she has been working on for a very long time she never thought she had was going to be able to buy a house. And here she is um, getting pre-approved for a $300,000 mortgage. And she was just crying because she was so excited and grateful that she was able to change her life around. My point of sharing that is it is possible. Um, the banks they care about a few things but press past transgressions like that they don't care they're not judging you um your realtor they're not going to judge you so if there are things in your past that you're ashamed of you don't have to share them with us but it does give us hope for the future seeing that people please stop seeing that people are able to achieve their dreams of stability and home ownership. This guy, what's this guy? 
We're yeah. going to have to add a segment for the Carter show wow. next time. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> honey, that, that's Lisa. We can't get her camera on. Can you say hi, Miss Lisa? Hi, Miss Lisa. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And well, Ryan. So, Ryan, oh, go ahead. Uh, Ryan um, I, I like what you said about how, um, you know, it's not the lender nor your job really to judge what a person has had in their past. Um, you know, as a lender, it's their job to actually just take a, you know, a deeper look at your credit and, and like tell you where you're at. Because even if a person goes in and is trying to get pre-qualified for that very first time, they might possibly not be at that point that they need to be at. And your story of your gal, that's, that's wonderful because you know, it's something she's been working on. And there are a lot of things that you can do, you know, to work to get your credit where it needs to be, even if you find out that very first time that you're not, um, you know, qualified yet. So I like that. And you, it's not you know, the end of the world if they tell you you're not qualified no. yet. It's, right. Okay, here's, here's my roadmap. There's people there to help explain. When I was brought up, we never discussed credit. I didn't know credit was a thing. I just thought, mm -hmm. you know, you, you just, so now I've got a team of financial people that how I can call and guide me on, you know, I, I can call someone and say, Hey, I'm thinking about buying a new car. Where should my budget be? What, 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 where do you think I should be? And, and they'll give you good and solid advice and tell you, you know, your income is $2,000 a month. So you really don't want your car payment to be more than 200 a month. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of misconceptions are if you don't use credit, it's better. One school thought, yes, because you don't have any debt, but you, they, the banks need to see you being responsible with your credit. And so it is right. smart to get a credit card and buy a tank of gas a month. You know, just because so they see some sort of activity on there. Um, that was my gal's problem was she just never used credit. And so she actually could have gotten a home three years ago, but she was scared to have the conversation. And so now she's not scared anymore. She made the connections. She knows her tribe of people that are going to help her, give her solid advice um, she has a four-year-old granddaughter and she is so excited to have a home base for her, a place that she can always land in the future. And that's why I'm, when, when I started doing real estate, um, everyone asked me, well, cause some of us like to brand ourselves as a luxury agent or whatever. And I said, I want to help people. That's it. I just want to help people. I don't care if they have a $10,000 budget or a $3 million budget. I just want to help people. And they said I was crazy. But I get more joy out of helping a first-time home buyer than the rich person that is a pain. <laughs> All right. Awesome, Ryan. Thanks so much. Um, you mentioned about credit and I know that's a big thing we're focusing on now at West Central and we brought Michelle on. Michelle, do you want to talk a little bit about um, some of the aspects of, of how to improve your credit? And also I, I want to mention, you know, um, if you are going to talk to a lender, make sure you know what your credit is before you go in so you don't have any surprises, but I'm going to turn it over to Michelle. Talk about that. Okay. Um, I think one of the things um, to keep in mind when you are going to be going in, especially if you're interested in buying a house is, is as Lisa just said, do your homework before you go. Um, it's really important. And I know a lot of people, um, have lots of misconceptions when it comes to credit. And 
Um, I think one of the most important thing is that people don't know is that you can pull a free credit report um, yearly. Um, there is a site called annualcreditreporting.com and they allow you to pull um, the credit bureau and there are three major credit reporting bureaus. There is Equifax, TransUnion and Experian and they let you pull one of those free a year. Um, I do know that a lot of people have heard of Credit Karma. A lot of people have heard of um, some other quote free credit reporting agencies. Um, in my experience, I found that they're not necessarily free because the first initial time might be free and then they'll charge you a monthly fee after that. Um, another way that you can go about it as well is you can, um, a lot of your credit unions, um, credit card companies, they will offer to um, do a link. Um, my husband's prior military, so we have USAA, and one of their services is that they keep you linked um, to, it may only be to Experian, but they keep you linked to that so that when you go in and you're looking at your statement, um, one of the things they offer on their page is that you can be tracking your Experian credit report, um, you know, monthly. Um, those are free services that generally a lot of people will um, um, offer to you. And I think that's really important. Um, not only the reason, one of the reason, main reasons that it's important is there's a lot of times that things will be reported to your credit report that you're unaware of. And that can be something you know, minor, that can be, um, I guess nothing's really minor, but you're a late payment that happened on one of your credit cards. It can be a collection account that a medical or a dental company has hit you with, um, a bill that you've possibly just forgotten, and now it's been turned over to a collection agency. Um, in my experience, we have four people on our family that have uh, almost exact names, except for first, second, and third, and junior. And um, so we have had credit that was not ours on our credit report and vice versa. My daughter has named Charlie, but everyone in the family is named Charles and she's even had credit on her credit report that's not hers. So these are all types of things that we need to, um, you know, be looking at because um, I can tell you from experience that credit companies, they're giving stuff um, you know, through from your creditors, and they're the first to ding you, they're just not quite the ones that are the best to help you repair it if it's there. Um, now, with everything being virtual, it actually has become quite easier to go in and do some of this stuff online. And TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian have all um, made it possible that you can do a dispute right online, especially if something's, you know, on your credit report that shouldn't be there. Um, when you go in and you're looking for a house, you don't necessarily want to show up at the lender and be blindsided by something that might be there. Um, so that's why I say it's really super important, you know, um, as Ryan said too earlier, you know, he he grew up in a family where they really didn't even talk about credit. So understanding, you know, what credit is and, and what's, you know, the, the best ways to use your credit is another thing that's really important. Um, I had a similar family. Um, they didn't talk about it. You know, credit scores weren't important. Um, and, you know, thank goodness, you know, I married, you know, my husband and his family is quite opposite of that. So, um, it was something that I learned. It seemed like it took a long time. It was quite an education. Um, but I think the biggest thing is people just need to not be afraid um, of using credit. And what Ryan said is actually easier to buy a house a lot of times than it is to buy a car. Um, so I think the biggest thing is, is monitoring your credit and making sure that, um, you know, if you are going to start trying to use some credit that, like he said, use a small credit card that you know that you could throw a tank of gas on each month and it'd be very easy for you to pay off or, 
you know, um, rule of thumb is usually about 30%. They don't want to see you if you have a credit limit of $1,000. They really typically, the thing that helps your score the most is to stay below 30% on your balance on that credit card. Um, you know, buying a car, that is a good way to um, actually establish credit as well, as long as you keep your payments within a comfortable range for yourself. Um, you know, and I know a lot of times, like, um, when, you know, your teenager who's now turning 18 or is um, going to buy their first car, um, a lot of times a parent may have to co-sign or that, um, and it is actually helpful to them. That is something that um, you can also be a, it helps to build their credit score up pretty quickly, especially, you know, with the on-time payments and that. So there are banks that actually offer like a secured loan, um, you know, a very small loan that you can start establishing your credit on as well. So there's a lot of things and there's probably too much to go into, you know, today, but, um, you know, there, these are things to keep in mind. You want to try to have about three established trade lines when you're going to go in and get pre-qualified for a home. And that's part of what we're doing here is um, for helping people do their credit building and take a look, even for those people who may have had something in the past that, um, you know, has now affected their credit and, um, it, you know, it hasn't helped their credit score grow, but we are looking at things like that and we can help people with that as well. Is there right. anything else, Lisa? <laughs> Michelle, how would they get a hold of you um, if they wanted to participate in credit building? Um, they can get a hold of me through West Central Community Action Agency. And um, I don't, you know what, Lisa? I, I'm afraid to say I don't know the phone number that they're supposed uh, to call. How about me. this? I'll put your email address in the chat box. That'd be perfect. And Ryan, how do we get a hold of you if they want to buy a house with somebody that cares about people? Um, I'm with Keller Williams out of Springfield. Uh, my number is 417-770-7473. Um, <clears throat> most people just send me a text and that's the easiest way. Um, I do have a big social media presence. So you can just search Ryan, the realtor, 417. Ryan, um, the other thing that I like, I mean, as you know, I had a history of mortgage stuff as well. And I, I think the thing that I like the most, and I appreciated what you said, is you are changing lives when you go out there and you get somebody into their, their home, their first home, especially. And that is so gratifying to see when you can actually help get that person to the point where they are buying a house, like your lady that you spoke about today and it does it it it's our job we're changing lives and i love that yeah and andrew at gershman mortgage they he has the same mentality he said you know whenever you get someone who's excited about buying a house it makes it so worthwhile awesome. yeah it does for sure you know, I mean, people that are renting, it's difficult because that money, you know, that money is just being thrown away in essence. And, you know, it's nice to know that when you've actually purchased your home, you're now taking that money and you're investing in something. Well, and what's really nice too, that a lot of people forget <clears throat> is when you buy your house, you're investing in your future. So right. when you retire, you don't have to pay a rent payment because you paid off your house. Right. Um, if you decide you want a bigger house, you can use that income that you've earned on your house as a down payment on a bigger house. Hey. hey. <laughs> do you typically, I wanted to ask you, do you typically see that your first time home buyers are in their first home for three to five years? would you say it varies it varies it depends on age a lot 
harder, harder right. in the conversation. Um, if they're mid twenties buying their first house, then yeah, typically five, six years, they'll be moving on to something bigger, harder, mm-hmm. please stop. Um, but if they're late thirties and their kids are pretty much grown, they won't be, they'll typically stay longer. Um, it, it depends on family needs. Um, sometimes people buy their first house and that's where they die. They just stay there. They're, mm-hmm. they're happy. They stay the rest of their lives. Right. Um, but one thing that's really nice when you own your home, you have access to more credit. Typically you can typically, if something goes drastically wrong, you can get some equity out of it at a much lower interest rate than a credit card or anything else. Um, but the, the thing that I love the most is when Lisa shared the non-monetary, non-financial benefits. Um, kids thrive in a stable environment. Yes, when they know they I'm coming home from school to my same bedroom. Um, I'm coming home, you know, they are adaptable, don't get me wrong. But when they know that things are stable, they, they're, they can focus on education. They can focus on friendships. They can focus on everything else. And so right. that, that's a, that lit my fire a little bit more when I saw the non-financial benefits. Um, right. That it's, it's really cool what it can do for kids and families. Awesome. Well, and I think the other thing I loved about being out, I mean, I don't know, all of us have rented at one time or another, and you could never, you, you're following the rules of that landlord. So you, if you couldn't have a pet or you, you couldn't paint this wall or you can, you know, buying your own home, the investment is you get to make it your own and whatever you need to do to your home, whatever your taste is, you know, now it is, yeah. it's truly yours. So. Right. And Great. it's fun painting. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm, now I don't go that far, but <laughs> I, I, I know a good painter. So, uh. <laughs> yes, you do, Lisa. <laughs> well, I want to thank both of you for joining us today. We appreciate your time. Um, I did. You're you're talking about um, the benefits to to kids and families, and I know we have a lot of families out there um, that that will be very interested in this. Um, so thanks again for your time and your expertise, and um, I, I am excited to see what we can do in the future. And I do want to, yeah, I do want to mention also um, uh, for any anyone watching this that is interested in some assistance with propane or electric, West Central does have our LIHEAP program open right now. And um, because of COVID, I think there's some additional funds going to that program. So um, if you're needing help with your heating bills this winter, reach out to West Central and let us help you with that. So if there's no other comments, then um, I just want to say thanks again. And uh, uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Okay.